it's a little hard to believe that after 20 or so years, we still are having changes to Age of Empires 2. And if you didn't hear, I'm sure you might have if you've been following the channel. Recently, there have been two new expansion civilizations. And everyone's asking me, how do you play these civilizations? What's the go-to? What are your thoughts? And this is going to be one of many games where I discuss the two new civilizations. But specifically this game, we have the Poles. Now, it's a really fun matchup because Lithuanians and the Poles are going to be the only two civilizations now that get the winged Hussar unit, which we may or may not see in this game. But what I'm going to show you real quick is we have a player named Sebastian here in the yellow. Is 2200, as of the recording this video, is 60th in the world. Up against Doubt, who I'm sure you've seen in the title. Doubt is a massive legend, and Doubt is also insane when it comes to experimenting with strategies. But yeah, before we get into the specifics, I just want to read through and remind everyone of what the polls are able to do. And uh, I have to say, overall, and I'll mention this in many other videos, I think that this Civ is probably one of my favorite expansion civilizations for quite some time. It doesn't mean it's necessarily the strongest Civ we've seen, but it is really fun. So let's go through it. Uh, villagers regenerate 5 HP per minute in Dark Age, 10 in Feudal, 15 in Castle, and 20 in Imp. The fall work replaces the mill, which we'll talk about. Stone miners generate gold in addition to stone. That we're really going to talk about in this game. But they have two cool unique units. Uh, the unique text then as well. Uh, notably, the Slata privileges. I really have to work on the pronunciation there. The knights costing 60% less gold can be very strong in the castle age. I mean, the trample damage on the light cav line is also good later on. Uh, that little team bonus is also nice, so maybe you don't want to make archers against the poles. But uh, yeah, uh, we we're, we're, might not see everything because poles have a lot available in this game, but we are going to see some of it, trust me. And it's going to be in typical doubt fashion where it's uh, it's in a unique way, right? So uh, the map is Four Lakes, and I really don't think this is a map that poles shine. Uh, I think Lithuanians are top three, maybe even top four. Yeah, it's got to be top three in my eyes. On a map like this, um, if you watched any of the Hidden Cups or any tournament incorporating a map called Cross, which has a little less fish, Lithuanians, Japanese were always really strong, maybe Persians as well. Um, and a little shout out to Malay. But um, the reason Lithuanians are top tier here is that they start with so much food in the bank with a plus 150 food start that you can send villagers to wood a little earlier and then get the fishing ships out faster. And you can see that reflected in Yellow's current eco situation um but yeah so i guess because it was historically accurate what the devs did was they added the winged hussar to the lithuanians so they have the winged hussar available alongside the poles and these are the only two civilizations that get winged hussar um now the pole winged hussar are much stronger uh at least in, in, when it comes down to the trample damage and the attack upgrade but i suppose lithuanians do get the final armor it's interesting, you know, I feel like the poles, what really breaks this sieve, or sorry, separates this sieve from all the others is how the sieve plays out and the economy. Uh, just the fact that mining stone gives you some gold as well opens up so many strategies. It opens up fast castling into castle drops. It opens up tower rushing. And one of the games I played, one of the very first games I played with the poles, which won't hit YouTube, I went for man-at-arms and towers because... With any other sieve, you'd have to send villagers to gold to get the man-at-arms, or the archers, right? And then you'd have to send additional villagers to stone. Well, instead of sending two to gold and, like, three to stone, I just sent four to stone. And that was a decent amount of gold for me to be able to do what I wanted. So, I mean, that alone is really strong. And uh, that's a small spoiler, guys, because we are actually going to see Doubt do something similar in this game. Uh, he's getting Loom right now, which is an indicator he's about to drop off some food and go feudal. Both players have docks in their pond. And typically the the goal on a map like this is to dock the ponds, take fish control. So things like sneaking villagers to try and get docks up in the enemy's pond is always common. But look over here. Sebastian, If you might be wondering, like, why is someone named Sebastian? Oh, what's up with all these characters? I don't know. This guy's from Uruguay. And a lot of top players like to have second accounts. So, um... It is a known account. It was just the name was changed on Steam or whatever to maybe, you know, think people, uh, make people think that it's someone that it's not. But Sebastian is an up and coming player and very fast and seems very motivated to improve as well and is currently making militia. Now, Doubt's going to have some decisions here. So Doubt's trying to go forward 
He's sending villagers to stone so he can get towers, and then who knows what he's going to do with the gold. He doesn't have any military buildings yet, but he just saw the barracks, he just saw the flags, and Sebastian knew that doubt was coming in. So That's Sebastian's right. like, okay, five villagers coming forward. I'm going to send four of my own. Try and keep track of this until my militia get there, which is actually a really smart move. Yay. And then typical doubt fashion. Doubt's just like, uh, I could go home, but I'm already committed, so let's just keep trying. And you look over at Sebastian's side of things. Sebastian's like, ooh, I'm in feudal faster. Great, let's chase down that scout. And now Sebastian's like, where are these villagers at? Now, if you think about the situation right now, economically, they're pretty even. I'd say Sebastian has a slight lead. But they both have villagers running around. The doubt with four going to attack and one peeling off to the side now. But these villagers could easily go down. Actually, did doubt lose his scout here? I'm trying to figure out where it went. It did not go down. It is here. It is weak. But it did not go down. And then here you have Sebastian. And look at the blocking here. This is really good technique. Pull unit in front. And so we know this villager is probably going to go down. Sebastian uh, maybe could have just started, kept attacking here with that scout, but decided to go back to finish it off and says, okay, well, we're going to go back home now. Now, what Sebastian didn't realize is that Doubt had sent five villagers. Sebastian saw four in this group and killed one, and four is kind of the traditional forward number. I don't know why that is. It's probably just the number that everyone's been going with recently because it used to be like five. Um, but nowadays, everyone loves their eco. They don't want too many villagers forward, so they go four. Doubt went five like the old days. Another villager goes down, and but Doubt has this little hero villager down here, and he is making fire galleys. Now, what's so cool about this, I mean, that was this has been a massive fail for Doubt. He's had to make a tower here, right? But this tower and these fire galleys all come in from the fact that Doubt went to stone with a few villagers. This is unique to Poles. It is unique to them, and it's going to make a big deal. It's going to be a big deal for him because we have follow-up archers now from the enemy and those archers of course are not going to have a great time if there's towers out so it's still a little complicated but the big thing here is doubt's going to go double dock is that doubt is going to try and combat this player's fishing ships who currently has 16 on food compared to doubt seven doubt is behind in economy but it's doubt now check this out this is so good from yellow he snuck over here and he's placed a dock now i don't know how close doubt's been paying attention to this but it's normally intentional if you have fishing ships there. I should show you that the man at arms are actually attacking a tower right now. And so what Doubt has to do is he has to attack with some vills, garrison back inside. The tower is not going to hit those man at arms unless they're further away from the tower. So great micro here from Doubt. This is actually why you shouldn't at a, a uh, high level do what Yellow's just done here. Because this is normally the result, but it still takes some work. And Yellow's also dodging the tower fire, which is cheeky. And also dropping a tower on Doubt's Woodland. I mean, this is a really good game. Doubt still doesn't mind any gold and says, well, shoot. Now I have to make another woodline. And there he goes. And also, his fishing ships could get hit in just a moment. On the bright side, though, he is currently clearing up all of the enemy fish on this side. So yeah, really, really intense stuff. Really aggressive game. This is why I wanted to show it to you. But Doubt, like, what he does to test out sieves, I've noticed is that he goes to the extremes. Like, he could send a few villagers to gold right now. It would probably help him. Because you bring in gold at half the rate you bring in stone, he's floating a lot of stone. But nope. He even has a goat on a wood line. Like, what the crap is that? Nope. Not from doubt. He's really focused here. He'll probably start adding fishing ships out of those docks. And yellow was very late to add something here, but also so was doubt. Doubt hasn't made a fire galley yet, and doubt says, hmm, I wonder if I can just tower this. There it is. So I would say the struggle on four lakes, and this is pretty common, is that players will um, they commit everything to food eco. And then if you lose that food eco on water, it's just such a big loss. Like, you don't plan ahead to make a mill and make farms because you think the fishing ships are going to be good for you. And both players are going to have a little bit of struggles here. Is doubt it's going to make a fire galley. And this is actually a really smart move as he tries to make the tower. And this is what I mean about this player. Look at that. Doubt's going to get out anyways. I'm telling you, this is young kid. He's like 20, 21. I played him a lot of times, uh, uh, quite a few times on the ladder. He's gotten me quite a few times too. And, and he loves his quick walls. He's real quick. And he walled down in there for a second. But the villager goes down anyways. 
think Doubt will end up maintaining control with these fishing ships. He also is going to have some fishing ships here. And he's docking down here in the south. Here come two archers, though. It's going to be messy for Doubt as he's just trying to save food for Castle Age. Yeah, not taking any gold. And what we haven't seen yet is the full work. I'm going to have other videos with the full work. Seen a little bit more. But that's really fun to use with the farms. Uh, in fact, I think by, by the time I upload this, you would have already seen a game where I played as the polls and I, I discuss everything that I was thinking in the moment. And, you know, what went right, what went wrong. At least you get to see the full work utilized. So Sebastian, or Yellow, uh, is now going to wall up. Which is a smart move if you're expecting some type of a counter from Doubt. Crazy walls, but Doubt doesn't have any military right now. And Doubt's economy looks really, really bad. But he's got a lot of stone. He's got gold income. He doesn't need to even take this gold right now. You're going to see the enemy use the market big time. Try and go castle. And that's a smart move here. I think Doubt should probably do the same. Doubt's villager went down back here. And Doubt is really not in... I mean... Based on the fishing ships he has right now, things are going to look better for him long term, especially because Yellow has one on food right now. That's got to be sorted out, actually. I guess Yellow's unable to take the berries as well. Yeah, so just not farming right now for some reason, but I think we're going to see something YOLO. You see eight on gold. You see a lot on wood. Honestly, there will probably be less on wood soon. I think we'll see some more villagers go to gold. If we're not seeing a Lithuanian player try and get food eco for knights... You can always go for that clowny approach, that arena approach. And that arena approach would be a lot of monks. Lithuanian monasteries do work faster, so it's an option. And now Doubt's just like, okay, I'm going to tower this gold because I might need it. And this is funny. So I guarantee you Doubt wants a market right now. Yeah, there it is. So Doubt made this full work here. Uh, I guess he could use it for the deer or whatever. But the time he made it and the placement of it tells me that he forgot that you need a mill, or in this case, a full work. These things look really freaking cool, don't they? Uh, you need this to be able to make a market. It's such a weird AoE thing. I don't know why that is, but you do. I remember, I, like, I have that issue on this map, and I have that issue on Nomad a lot, because normally you don't make mills at, in the uh, early stages. So yeah, long story short, he kind of panicked there a little bit, had to add the full work, which he might farm around. You get 10% of the farm's food after placing the... Uh, farm next to it so that's really nice but no real sign he's gonna farm because he's got fish in the south too this villager might be tracked down and here come the four villagers now there's a siege workshop there's a monastery actually looks like it was gonna be double siege workshop i think that must have been a hotkey misclick i don't think double siege workshop really makes a whole lot of sense but double monastery tends to now here's what's cool doubt has brought in he just went to gold right doubt has brought in so much gold. He's brought in 800 gold. Actually, I was expecting that number to be a little higher, but it does make sense based on how much stone has been brought in. 800 gold when you have not had any gold mining upgrades, when you've just recently gone to gold, is pretty sick. Now he's adding a stable here. And he actually sees the Siege Workshop. So yeah, yellow's in I have no eco, I need to kill fast mode, which is actually a great mode to be in if you think you're up against a better player too. Just in general, you try and play the meta. I mean, to be honest, this guy, I think he should probably continue to try and play the meta because he's got a lot of talent. But for me, I'm not getting any younger. I know I'm pretty slow. I'm kind of like the doubt of the top 100 that's not in the top 20. Because <laughs> every time, even if I win or lose, I'm always slower than everyone I play. Um, but anyways, what I'm getting at here is sometimes you have to play to the extremes to beat a player who's better than you. And that's exactly what this strategy is. Now, doubt he had used the towers earlier for defense against archers and man-at-arms. And now, the tower's not going to work anymore, but he is going to place a castle. So, he has a scout here. The monk is uh, going to be his target because he wants to be able to take out the siege with some knights, and another monk goes down, and this is so good for Doubt right now. So good for Doubt. The castle's going to keep him protected. The foodie co, of course, is working on the pawns. Nice job from Doubt to uh, focus down those monks. The scout edition was perfect, and the night timing was perfect. Of course, with a little bit better RNG, Yellow's in a different situation. But this castle drop pretty much neutralizes... Nice job there from Yellow, actually. But it pretty much neutralizes this area. And it neutralizes the push. There's not much more Yellow can do, except maybe try and reposition. And this is a player, as we're going to see Doubt take out another Maganel, though he does lose that knight to the conversion. 
Uh, I, I mean, Yellow's economy is just all in on golden wood with just a little bit of food. So, and that little bit of food is in the north, by the way. Population's pretty close, but doubt ahead. And doubt is now getting the unique tech. So we talked about it at the start. This makes knights cost 60% less gold. So the thing about knights is that they're a pretty strong unit, and they also cost a lot, so donating them to monks is a real problem. But now, it, it, do you really have to worry? I mean, you do have to worry about them having a lot of knights and then sending it into your eco. But I mean, my point is, you could justify playing this out and, and just being aggressive against monk plays with this tech. You certainly don't need to have as many on gold to be able to make the knights, which is really good because... Let's say, let's say one player gets that tech, and the other one doesn't, and they both have 50 vils. Well, the person who gets that tech has a lot more food eco, or wood eco then, because they don't need to prioritize the gold eco quite to the same extent. This is kind of funny. Knights are being created for doubt. This Maganel rolls right underneath the TC, and the knights pop out for doubt, and that was a big mistake for yellow. You never want to just swoop on by a stable like that. That's what doubt was hoping for. He's able to take out the monks... Does lose a few knights, but the thing about monks is they will snowball on you, and he's just going to run away now. I think the Maganel is going to go down. Now, what's a little bit of a shame here is that in this particular game, we're not getting to see Doubt at any farms. We're not getting to see that. There are other games and instances where we'll see that from polls. But the beauty is, you don't necessarily have to. I mean, Doubt kind of uh, deked his opponent earlier, faked him out a little bit, and that villager on... The left side was able to make fire galleys because of the stone mining bonus. And now we're seeing Doubt utilize the fish, as you should on this map, but utilizing the unique tech when his eco isn't like crazy crazy, and he's making plenty of knights. I mean, look at the queue for him. Eight knights queued, more stables coming out. I think it's also recognition from him. He knows what this type of a play means for Yellow. He knows, based on the score as well, that Yellow probably does not have the best economy. Now, here's, here's an important thing to point out. Yellow, you might be thinking right now, well, Yellow has 14 on food. Why doesn't he just buy some stone, add some town centers, and try and boom, as he actually calls the GG. So the problem is, even though the population is really close, I, and I, I think this is still an early GG, but even though the population is really close, you trying to boom at this point, invest resources in the back home, when you have one, two, three, four, five really expensive, really important forward buildings, and you don't have anything at home, right? So you're kind of in this mode where it's invest everything forward or die. And uh, he decides to just call the GG before doubt pops out. I mean, a little unsatisfying at the end of the video, so it feels bad, man. But uh, you've got like two knights here, two knights here, two knights here. Doubt has knights back here. Doubt has more stables coming up, and doubt was just probably going to clear this. Over the next 60 seconds, if this game was scripted, what I would have done is I would have made sure that Doubt got the clear up and then the GG was called, but that is not how it works. I have no control over that. Uh, Doubt with more food eco in this game, it didn't really stem back to the farms. Oops, excuse me. Uh, did not really stem back to the farms at all. He didn't even need that. But it did stem back to the fishing ships, which he did a great job on. It was so funny to me how that one villager, that actually not this one, but... That one villager was able to peel off from the group and, and change the start of this game. But the, the coolest thing for me is really how Doubt was able to contest for water. And he was able to make towers out having to go to gold. He didn't go to gold until he was on the way to Castle Age. It's a really cool bonus. And in many ways, I, I don't think the polls are OP, which makes it even more exciting because... That was my first instinct when I heard of that bonus. I was like, oh, the sieve's going to be broken. Don't think it necessarily is. Polls are really fun. I'm loving the farms, even though it does make me place my farms a little bit more uh, appropriately, which which ruins my reputation. But uh, yeah, we'll talk more about it. I'll upload more videos. If you guys have any thoughts on polls as a whole, polls as a whole, <laughs> or this game, let me know in the comments. And guys, I appreciate you so much. Thanks for being here. For me, I know that you guys like to fall asleep to my videos or you like to watch this during work or after work or whatever. But uh you know, even though I can't reach out and get to know every single one of you, that would be kind of difficult. I uh, I appreciate you all. I do see your comments and just you being there and interested in what I'm putting out each and every day is so cool and exciting, especially because this game is supposed to be dead. How are we here right now?
new sieves again what on earth is that here's the statistics lots of good resources there for doubt so i think if the rate is two to one from stone to gold doubt brought in like 900 gold from the stone collected right um so it's not again nothing crazy but yeah just wanted to point that out and thanks for watching everyone i'll see you in the next video